Hi, I'm Andrew, and today I'll be talking about a de-identification approach for human data held by external data custodians. There's three levels of data identifiability. The first is individually identifiable, where the data still contains names or data, dates of births. The second is re-identifiable, where in theory all the identifiers have been stripped out or replaced by random codes, but there still remains extra attributes in the data set that could potentially be linked to other data sets to re-identify individuals. And finally, there's non-identifiable, where it should be impossible to identify any individual in the data. In practice, non-identifiable data is very hard to obtain, especially when nowadays we have social media, there's a large amount of public data available out there about individuals. A lot of theoretically non-identifiable data sets turn out in practice to be re-identifiable because of new ways to link details of those data sets out to that large body of existing known information about people. As such, the National Statement 2007, where these definitions were taken from, was recently updated in 2018 to represent this more as a continuum. In any case, for the rest of this presentation, I'll be focusing on non-identifiable data, or as close as we can practically obtain to non-identifiable data, which has two benefits. Firstly, for participants, it provides the strongest level of privacy possible. And secondly, if we can find a way to use pre-existing non-identifiable data for research, then often it's possible to get ethics exemption, which saves a lot of paperwork. So the existing approach for reusing a data set held by an external industry data custodian is that they're responsible for the people in that data and take responsibility for de-identifying the data, and then they send it off to the researcher to analyze further. The problem with this approach is if they de-identify the data too much, then there's too little detail left and the researcher can only sort of explore high level summary questions rather than being able to really delve down into the details of the data, which is where a lot of the more interesting questions lie when we can really link that data set to other data sets and explore. On the other hand, if they leave too much detail in the data set and the data isn't properly de-identified, then the researcher may be in violation of human ethics protocol if they end up using re-identifiable data when they were actually meant to be using non-identifiable data. And there could also be legal issues for the data custodian if they're sharing customer or employee data with external parties and it turns out that that data could be linked back to those individuals. As a concrete example, in my own PhD project, I was looking at AFL player GPS tracking data, which is held by the football clubs. Now, the issue is that the data was pre-existing from some time ago, so it was impractical to go back to the players and obtain consent specifically to use that in my research project. On the other hand, de-identifying that data, as I think you can see from this image, is a lot harder than just stripping out the player names, which is what the football club was initially proposing to do. Now, we did come up with an approach to de-identify this data properly. Basically, rather than looking at individuals, we look at the team formations, and then within the team formations, we scramble the ordering of players to make it very difficult to trace any particular individual over the course of the match, while still preserving the ability to sort of analyze the team as a whole. The issue being, however, that although we could sort of theoretically solve this from an algorithmic point of view, from a human point of view, the football club only had basic technical resources and ability to use tools such as Microsoft Excel, which meant that even though we had this theoretical approach to de-identify the data, they couldn't implement it in practice. Thus, the approach that we propose in this paper 
is that the researcher being in the best position to understand what data is actually needed and the appropriate data de-identification methodologies for that is the one who formalizes what they need as a script or a program and then it's up to the data custodian to act in a more approval role where everything the researcher wants to do goes past the data custodian for approval. So to explain how that works, in our solution, the data custodian uploads their identifiable data in an encrypted form to the cloud. The researcher also uploads the scripts specifying the data they want to extract and the de-identification approaches to that same sort of neutral cloud platform along with human readable summaries. Based upon the human readable summary, the data custodian decides whether they're comfortable with that research being run and whether it respects the rights of the people that are in their data set. If so, they authorize it by checking the box and providing their decryption key. The data gets temporarily decrypted in the cloud and the researcher's analysis script is run to produce a non-identifiable data output. The decryption key is destroyed to ensure that the identities can never be found again. And finally, the researcher is provided with the final de-identified output. So we found that this is a useful tool in my own research project. It provided a way for us to obtain the data that we were interested in while still keeping everything in non-identifiable form. There were some limitations of our approach. In particular, extracting the data and de-identifying it isn't a one-shot operation. Writing those scripts and understanding what it is we actually need to extract is an iterative process. So it needs to go past the team a few times for approval. Um, at first, our hope was that this would keep the data custodian kind of engaged in the process so they don't lose interest in pull out. Um, in practice, it ended up being a bit tedious because every single minor iteration needed to be approved by the team. However, um, I'm still going to argue that it's better than the alternative, which would be either to sort of ignore these ethics issues and go for a waiver of consent, which is really um, a last resort, not just because of the amount of paperwork involved, but also because to the participants there may be a legitimate reason that they would be uncomfortable with us having access to their data in a form that could be identified, or trying to teach the team themselves how to de-identify the data, which would be very difficult to deliver that educational experience, and also if they're not fully understanding of the de-identification and re-identification issues involved. They can make mistakes, which leads to re-identifiable data and a host of ethics and privacy concerns. So thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you.